Well, all right, so Bamboo Labs has been coming out uh, with a bunch of teasers, you know, about the, the big September 20th release, the big secret, right? And they put it out, uh, what is it, the colorful 3D printing for everyone. Um, they have it on their web page. You can find it on Facebook and different uh, uh, media outlets. Uh, and they follow it up with a, with a tweet. It's the active motor noise canceling tweet. And then they followed up with another tweet after that uh, with the rethink flow dynamics calibration. Uh, so they're, they're giving a lot of teasers. Plus, we know that Bamboo Lab uh, trademarked uh, the Bamboo Lab A1. Uh, so we know there's something up, right? That was a big clue. Uh, but there's still a lot of speculation on what is it actually going to be, right? And we have about eight days from the time that I'm filming this anyway. We have about eight days uh, before the 20th. And uh, so the t by the time you see this video, it might be, you know, a week or less uh, before it comes out. Uh, so, well, here's my two cents worth. And before we get started, remember to check out our website. We have a growing number of products, services, and even some pretty cool t-shirts. So, well, let's get started. So, looking at the image... Up at the top here, you, you see the different filament strands. It looks like about four of them that are being fed into what looks like an extruder. Um, now the input here, it looks like it's it's squared off, right? It's, it doesn't look round. It looks more rectangular, giving all the uh, the shadows and whatnot. Um, but I guess the big question is, is it is it square or rectangular? How deep does that go? Uh, and that kind of tells you, you know, is it going to be a two or four inputs, right? Is it going to be two uh, in a square format, or is it just going to be two inputs there? Um, yeah, who knows? And you can see on the side, um, this definitely looks like uh, a filament slicer, similar to what is on the X1 and the P1 series. So this has got to be some kind of extruder assembly or whatnot. The mounting holes you see at the top are are those two mounting holes to go on a different gantry or something or well, I could I guess it could be both because it kind of looks like the size of a stepper motor doesn't it? And here on the front you know that little uh, button or whatever, you know, I have no idea. Uh, it could be some kind of a visual indicator to let you know what color of filament is being fed. But when you look at it, it kind of only looks like there's, it, it tracks three feeds or something. So this being some kind of a, a multi-filament extruder, I mean, it makes all kinds of sense, right? Because right now, the only option with Bamboo Lab is that you have to buy that whole AMS setup. Uh, it's that or nothing, right? So now they have uh, or could have an extruder with a multi-filament uh, input and multiple color uh, capabilities without having to buy the AMS, right? Uh, but I guess the big question is, you know, looking at the unit and the size of that extruder, it looks like it fits, you know, like it'll have one, that one stepper motor there. It'll have, uh, you know, a single gear, you know, when it starts pushing filament down, it's like, well, how is it going to manage those four strands, the four filaments coming in? It's got to be pushed in from somewhere, right? So what's going to be driving each one and separating each one? Um, that's the big question I have about it. So if this is a, a colorful printing for everyone, what is it going to fit on? Surely they're not just going to have a standalone product that's going to fit other printers, you know, that you can swap out the extruders and all that stuff. I can't see that. I mean, Bamboo Labs into putting out full products, full printers, not just accessories, right? Uh, 
the accessories go along after they have uh, released uh, a full platform. Uh, yeah, and plus they have the Bamboo Lab A1 trademark, so I doubt if it's just going to be a standalone product like that. Is this going to be, all this stuff coming out, is it going to be a part of a new platform? And I'm thinking it could be, uh, instead of the Core XY, I think maybe this could be start of a, of a bed slinger uh, that they're going to come out with. Because if you think about it, if they're talking about active noise canceling, that's going to be a, a necessity with a bed slinger, right? Yeah, so the X1 and the P1 series printers are by no means silent, right? So if you look at that tweet, Bamboo's hinting at a 48 dB uh, level, right? So that's significantly quieter if you compare uh, the dB levels from the X1 being closed and cased and then uh, look at the DB level when it's when it's open. Um, yeah, you can see it, it, it's not not too quiet. It, and even I think some of my uh, Ender threes that I converted over uh, in the past uh, have been much quieter. And and that's with stock fans, stock motors. Uh, all I did was change the. Uh, uh, the main board out to a 30 bit 32 bit board and uh, uh, and the ender threes are, are fairly quiet right uh, but now the flow dynamics icon here it doesn't give you a whole lot of not a whole lot of clues here right um, because looking at it, it looks like the current uh, manual calibration, right? Where it just put out, put it, puts out the lines like that, and so maybe they're maybe they're hinting that it's going to be at a different scale, or uh, the range of increments. I mean, maybe instead of going from uh, you see here, it's going from a point zero zero five uh, increments, right? So. What I'd like to see is, you know, you go that way and then you choose a range and then, and then you, you calibrate uh, at a point zero zero one increments. You know, once you're within that range, then you can pinpoint what you need. But, but that one, you just have to wait and see, right? So if you look at this from a, a, a product management or a product portfolio management point of view, um, well, Bamboo Labs, they, they have a few options, right? And one of them could be going with uh, the larger build platform, say with the having the same platform as the X1 uh, in the P1 series, but with just with a lar larger build volume. And, and there's been a lot of guys that want this. I mean, including myself. If I could get my hands on one of those, that would be great. Um, but is that just a, a niche market, right? Because I, I know I had a uh, a Creality, what is it, the CR10, and I used to have it because I, you know, the 300 by 300 by 350 or 400, whatever that build plate was, and I really didn't use it that much, you know, for what I print off. Um, and when I sold it, I really haven't missed it that much. So. Although I would love to have uh, the larger build volume on on an X1 carbon, it's like, well, is it a necessity? No. And if you if they do offer, you know, that that larger the XL version XL, just uh, just my little term there. It's uh, I think a lot of guys would probably hold off getting an X1 or a P1 and and get the larger version. So you're kind of robbing, they'd be robbing themselves. Uh, they'll be competing against themselves, right? And where a customer is going to wait and buy another version instead of buying what they have now. And that's kind of what happened with the P1 series, right? When the P1P came out and I did the same thing. You see behind me here, I, I bought a P1P uh, for the lower price point and was happy with it and then did the uh, the conversion up to the P1S. Uh, so in that case, yeah, uh, between the P1 series and the X1 series, 
they're still competing against each other almost. It's just like coming out with different, like a automobile company coming out with different cars and they end up uh, competing against themselves over what the customer wants. But uh, they could also uh, go towards uh, a lower price point, right? Um, or a different, uh, like say the bed slinger. Uh, if it's a lower cost um, and a different kind of printer, they won't really be robbing, uh, competing against themselves as far as you know the Core XY stuff. So coming out with a, a bed slinger, it, it does make a lot of sense, right? Uh, it could be at a lower cost and that secret extruder, you know, that would fit on there. Uh, and so somebody could have uh, a multi-filament, multi-color uh, options on a bed slinger, which doesn't exist right now, right? Um, <clears throat> and if they do that, uh, the, the noise canceling stuff would be a necessity on a on a bed slinger and and then of course you have to calibrate everything right so it might be something a little different um, market wise if they come out with a bed slinger they'll I'm sure it's not going to be it's not going to be like going after uh, a Creality which came out with uh, with their latest Ender 3 is like 200 bucks um, that's probably not the, the market they're going for. If they come out with a bed slinger, it's going to be trying to go head to head with Prusa, right? They want a, you know, a good quality, uh, reliable printer, fast, and um, with features that, that you can't find on any other uh, bed slinger, right? Um, so if they came out with... Uh, with a bed slinger, you know, like looking at the price points, say, because with the the X1 Carbon, you're looking at what fifteen hundred dollars with the AMS. Uh, if you're uh, a P1P, would be what are they six hundred now? And uh, the P1S be seven hundred with an AMS would be a thousand. So, if you're looking at six hundred dollars for the P1P, well, if they came out with a, a bed slinger version with the with the multi-filament capabilities already in it and come out with that with uh, six, seven hundred, seven hundred or so, somewhere floating around there, uh, even up to eight hundred, that would still be lower than a, than a Prusa, uh, but then you'd have a bed slinger with the multicolor, uh, multi-filament stuff that right now you can really only have that um, for a thousand dollars, right? So there's the price points. And I guess it all matters when you start crunching the numbers and looking at, at what market you're going for. What would have the biggest demand? And in my opinion, they'd probably make a lot more sales if they came out with the bed sling or something at that, at, at, at that point, um, at that price point, uh, rather than it's either that or going for the larger X1, which would be fantastic, but I think it's a smaller market. So I guess you got to look at it that way also, and I'm sure they've crunched the numbers. Plus, Bamboo Lab has been building their own ecosystem, right? Um, and, and gaining a, a, a huge following. Um, and you can tell even, especially like in some of the forms, it cracks me up. Like, if, if you make a negative remark or somebody's asking to do something that, you know, well, why can't it do this or what, you know, this some, something's wrong with that. And, and there's so many guys that will chime in, the fanboys, I guess you'd call them. And they come in and, well, this is, it's better than this and you're, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. You know, they just come out in defense of Bamboo Lad before you even know what the problem is. And, <laughs> and it cracks me up. And some of these guys, they have a legitimate question. It might be their very first printer and they have a legitimate question to go to a forum in, and if they ask a question, these guys just browbeat them to death. And it, it's kind of, kind of stupid. But if if you if you look way back, even um, even in the the early Apple days, right? There were guys that, you know, they get in the Apple ecosystem and they they use nothing but Apple, 
and they're so defensive about it, you know. If somebody says, well, why don't you use this instead and do this and that and that, and they just, nah, blah, you know, they just. But I, I guess that that's what it kind of reminds me of. But think about it, you know, has, has that been a good mood, uh, a, a good move? Uh, Apple's one of the biggest companies in the world now, but but we'll wait and see what happens. So, and of course, if you think about their ecosystem, uh, even if they do come out with a, a bed slinger, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's still going to be in, in, in part of that ecosystem. You know, I'm sure you're going to have to use Bamboo Studio still, and you'll they'll, they'll push to go through the, their cloud system and all that good stuff. So they're, they're going to be entrenched. So I am predicting that the new Bamboo Lab A1, which has been trademarked, is going to be a new line of... Uh, bed slinger platforms and and it'll have a multi-feed extruder right i think it'll probably have the same uh bed that's used on the p1 uh the same heated bed same size that you'll see on the uh the x1 and p1 series it could have the same board the main board and probably um uh, same board it'll, it could have a camera on it and I guess the big question is, is it going to be quieter? And, and the calibration, is it going to be more automated or is it going to be manual, kind of like we're doing now? Uh, they kind of shifted over to that, didn't they? Uh, where it's not as automated as it was before. But they're calling automated. But to me, there's still, it's a, it's a cross. There's still a, a lot of manual calibration going on. I think the target market, like I said, is going to be the the, the Prusa users and the higher end, uh, the higher end market, and and I guess a lot of the clones too that are out there. There's some that are high end, but uh, but nothing like Prusa. That Prusa has a big following, so I think they're going to try to uh, uh, try to hit that market. Because um, after all, they even came out with their uh, uh, their version of printables, right? So it looks like they're they're really going after what uh, what Prusa has, and they're trying to get uh, get some of that market share. So after this series, after the A1 comes out, maybe uh, I hope they try to tackle the larger build volume. That would still be great to have, and I would love to have one myself. But we'll have to wait and see. So. Well, I guess that is it for this video. So I guess we'll see when September 20th rolls out uh, and we'll see what happens. So no gambling, please, but uh, we'll see what the Vegas odds are, right? But anyway, so I guess that's it for this video. So once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.